Hey guys and welcome back to another episode of the data series. Today we're going to be implementing logistic regression to predict where there will rain tomorrow in Albury, Australia. So previously we looked at linear regression for predicting value outputs such as pressure or humidity, but now we're looking at predicting categorical variables such as yes or no, pass fail, boil or goal, and we use logistic regression for this. So without further ado, let's begin. So here I have a new Jupyter notebook in which we'll be building this model. If you guys aren't sure on how to set up this Jupyter notebook, I'd highly recommend checking out the beginning of episode 4.3. As with all previous episodes, we import the pandas library as pd. I'm going to be going a bit quicker this episode since we've already done quite a few implementations and some of those steps are quite similar. So we're now going to import our data into Python. We'll give it a variable name. So in this case, we'll call it df, short for data frame, pd.readcsv. And then we'll get the file path of where we stored our data. So here I've stored the data under the file name project data. So we're just going to copy that file path and then add the file name, which is weather albury.csv. And then we're just going to display the first few rows by doing df.head to make sure everything is running. Cool. So we can see here all of our weather data. And just to give us an idea of how many rows and columns we have, we can do print. Then we're going to say size data frame. Then we can do a function called df.shape. So we're calling the shape method on our data. If we run this, you see we have 3011 rows and 13 columns. So one thing to note is if we look at our data here, we notice that there are some missing values. These are given by NA. If we were just to leave the data as it is, our model will not know what to do with these NA values. So in this episode, we're just going to remove any row which contains a missing entry. In a future episode, I hope to explain why this might not be the best idea, since we are essentially losing some data, which might be useful in building our model. So we can remove the rows of data with missing entries by doing df equals df.dropNA. So let's check how many rows of data we removed. So we can do print, then df.shape again. If we run this, you can see now here that we removed around 30 rows of data we shouldn't have too big of an impact on our model. So the next pre-processing step we need to do is to change all of these yes and no's into ones and zeros so it is suitable for input in our model. And we do that with the following code. So here we're simply just specifying the column name. So in this case, both rain today and rain tomorrow both have these yes and no's. Then we do dot replace, then we assign zero to no, one to yes. Do that for both cases. And this in place equals true basically means so this in place equals true basically means that our data is modified in their places and this doesn't return anything essentially just updating our data frame so our next step of pre-processing our data is to split our data into training and test data in order to cross-validate our model so here i've imported the train test split function from the scikit-learn library and all we need to do now is just define our model's features and we'll put that in capital X. And in this case, we're going to be using all of our features apart from state and location. Obviously, these don't have an effect on whether it will rain tomorrow. So we're just going to be looking at min temperature, max temperature, all of these until rain today. So I've entered them all into the X variable now. Now we define our Y, which is our model's output. That's obviously rain tomorrow. We can just do df.rain tomorrow, capital R. So to split our data into the training and test data, we use the following code. We set our four variables, x train, x test, y train, y test. Then we call our train test split function. And in this case, we're going to be using 20% of our data to test, 80% to train. And this random state equals 42 is essentially just the algorithm in which we shuffle our data before we split it. And we shuffle our data to make sure that there are no bias problems. So now that we've pre-processed all of our data, we're ready to implement our logistic regression model. With that, I've imported the logistic regression function from the scikit-learn library. I'm just going to give the function a name, so we'll call it logreg. And now we need to just fit this model to our data. So we can do logreg.fit. Remember, we're building our model on our train data. So we use xtrain and ytrain. And lastly, now that we've built our model, let's get a set of predicted values. We so underscore predict, and then we can do logreg. Predict. And we want to predict our x test data. So this is this x data which our model has not seen before, and it's going to be trying to predict whether it will rain tomorrow for this data. So if we run this code here, 
should be good to go. Let's just display why I predict in, a, in our in our Jupyter notebook. We run this. You see all of our predicted all of our predicted values of whether it will rain tomorrow in Albury. All of our test data. So I'm just going to get rid of this because this is taking up quite a bit of space. Run this again. But now that we've built our model, it's now time to evaluate it and see how accurate it is predicting if it will rain tomorrow in Albury. So for that, I've imported the accuracy score function again from the scikit-learn library. And we discussed accuracy at the end of the previous episode, so I'd highly recommend you guys to check that out. But here we're going to store our accuracy in a variable called score, and we'll call the function accuracy score. And this takes two values, our y test, which is our actual values, and y predict, which is our predicted values. And then we'll display the score in our Jupyter notebook. So we'll do accuracy, and then we'll do comma score. We run this, we see that our model has an accuracy of around 0.866, which is pretty good, which means that our model gets around 86% of its predictions correct. So lastly, we can now use our model to make some predictions. So here I have a CSV file of some weather observations. So we can imagine that one day we went to Albury and we recorded some weather data. We now want to use our model to predict whether it will rain tomorrow, given this data. So the first thing we need to do is to read this data into Python. So as before, I've read this data using the read CSV file from the pandas library. I've stored it under the variable observations. And now we need to just apply the exact same pre-processing steps that we did before. Ideally, we should really write a function that does all of this pre-processing for us. If, if any new observations, we can just apply this function and it will automatically get rid of any NAs and replace all the no's with zeros and yes with ones. But in this case, because there's not really much code, I'm just gonna copy and paste what we did before and just replace this DF data frame with OBS our new data set and lastly notice how on our data here we have some column headings so obviously our model can't read these column headings so we need to get rid of these and for that we're just going to extract the values by doing new data equals obs dot values lastly let's now make some predictions with this new data by calling our model which we call a log reg if we run this now you can see here our predicted values for our observations is Yes, no, and yes. So yes, it will rain tomorrow for this observation, no for this, and yes for this. So I hope you guys found this episode to be quite useful and learned something new. In the next episode, we're going to be implementing logistic regression again, but this time on a much bigger data set, and we're going to be doing more pre-processing steps to help improve our model's performance. So that will be project two of the data series, and I hope to see you guys there.